Here's a recipe I created in hopes to inspire while everyone's gearing up for this year's holiday dining. Regardless of your diet, I just know you have some go-to dishes in your holiday menu lineup. Personally, I have found joy in blending some of the old with some of the new, kind of like our music nowadays. And if you're looking for a meal that is simple, filling, and for the most part, spends a good amount of the time cooking itself, this is your dish. It's called roasted cauliflower steaks with garlic beans and vegan pesto. And if you plate it right, it could also be a really stylish and tender centerpiece. Although if you're like my dad, the entire plate is filled with a bunch of sides, but the sheer amount of the sides, you would think there's just a bunch of main courses. Call me a kid if you want but I still enjoy them plates that like have sections. Although I still do pair them up before I put them in my mouth. So, you know, it's, it's logical up here. We're starting off this dish by making a small batch of homemade pesto. It is by far the easiest thing you're going to make. And really the key word to a successful pesto here is fresh. I have found myself in a tough spot before didn't have enough fresh basil to make the dish. So I added some fresh parsley to accompany the basil. It does the job in a pinch, but it's nothing like sweet basil. The pine nuts can be swapped. I've used walnuts, I've used cashews, with cashews being the favorite when it comes to similarity in taste. If you're here for the first time, I do this a lot. It uh, pretty much means everything in my language. If you're not a pesto person, don't hesitate to go for something like a chimichurri. The flavor combination is great. And you may even find yourself forgetting that pesto was supposed to be the original part of this dish. Cauliflower steaks are incredible, but at the same time, they can seem intimidating to cut, especially if you're a first timer. Cutting too much, not cutting enough, the whole thing falling apart. What's made the process easier for me is I look at the cauliflower stem and I determine how many I'm gonna be able to get out of that. Then on the head of the cauliflower, I actually take a little bit off the top. Kinda sounds like I'm a barber. Sticking with that barber theme, that trim is going to help me balance the cauliflower because I'm intending to turn it back over. Then stem side up, I almost feel like I need a subject here. One second. Okay, so subject. Don't have any more cauliflower. So stem side is up. Definitely don't chop this much off the top, just a little bit. Process is slightly different from what I do in the video. I'm a bit more comfortable when cutting now, but this is how I used to do it. I cut down on both sides of the stem, just like that. Then with the stem intact and whatever florets are still left underneath of the stem, I determine the size I want my steaks to be and eyeball my cut straight down from there. If you really want your cauliflower to be juicy, there's a portion of the baking process that I didn't show here, but what I would do was cover up the baking tray with aluminum foil and put that in the oven for the first few minutes of baking. You could skip that part of the process, but I use that in order to steam the vegetable before completely roasting. And that allows it to build up some juices prior to the roasting, which ultimately is just going to dry everything out as it cooks. If you don't have aluminum foil or you don't use it for whatever reason, then you could use a baking tray, flip it right on top, as long as it's similar in size or bigger. As for those leftover florets, don't forget about them. Make sure you get them in the oven as well and roast them alongside your cauliflower steak. They should take less time, so just make sure you keep an eye on them. And if you're meal prepping or looking to, you know, beef up the current dish, then you could add those just alongside the main course. The garlic beans, I could eat by the handful. They're very subtle and flavorful at the same time while not taking anything away from the star of the show. And once you get to this part of the recipe, you're pretty much almost done. The beans you saw me use are butter beans. I also use cannellini beans in place of that as a good swap. So I didn't do it here, but I do like to caramelize those shallots. It increases the cooking time, but it's such a good and smart way to just intensify the flavor. I also used water in the recipe. I would recommend using veggie stock instead, but if you happen to use water, add just a pinch of salt and you're
perfect. If you don't have rice vinegar, try sherry vinegar or apple cider vinegar to help finish this dish off. Any of the three, add the perfect punch to this to make it amazing. Thank you so much for your time. More inspiration coming, but also check out some of my recent uploads for more ideas if you haven't. Or if you have and you know, you're just in the mood of sharing some love, check them out anyway. As always, believe in good. Peace.